We are definitely diving deeper into Israel this morning. Israel carrying out a military strike inside Iran. Yes, this follows Iran's attack on Israel late Saturday. You'll remember launching more than 300 drones and missiles. Joining us this morning is retired U.S. Army veteran and foreign policy expert, Lieutenant Colonel Darren Gobb. Lieutenant Gobb, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Hey, good morning. Hey, thanks for having me. Lieutenant Gobb, I want to start here. Where do Israel's allies stand in relation to what we just saw play out last night? Yeah, I think uh, we'll start with after Iran's failed strike on Israel that uh, a lot of different countries came out and realized what Iran really is even though I don't think there was a lot of mystery beforehand based on their actions. But even nations like Jordan and Saudi Arabia, you either see them helping you know, shoot down some of the missiles or drones or standing by quietly and, and not getting involved. So ultimately, I think Israel is the big winner here. Uh, Iran has made even more of a pariah state, even though unfortunately we've enabled them through our own actions and uh, funding both direct and indirect. Um, Let's hope it ends here, but uh, there are far more people on Israel's side now than there were before, and they know that Israel has the right to defend itself. Yes, Lieutenant Gobb, how would you characterize Israel's response to Iran's attack? Well, I would actually just say it was fairly limited in scope, but what it did display was the ability to hit multiple targets in multiple countries near simultaneously with very good intelligence. Now, the, the scope of damage remains to be seen and, and whether or not they achieve their true objectives also remains to be seen if those are advertised. But um, it, Iran should definitely be awake now to the fact that uh, their facilities and locations in Iran are easily open to strike from Israel with only minor with only minor effort from from Israel itself. It's um, they're not as well protected as they may think they are in Iran. That's a good point there. I also want to kind of talk on the broader implications, if you may, Lieutenant Gobb. What are the broader implications for this conflict, not just there in the region, but on a global scale? Well, first of all, you've got Iran, who's been spreading terror throughout the Middle East, and it's not only through the Houthis, through the through Hezbollah and Hamas, but they, they have other issues with regards to that in Pakistan and Afghanistan, where they've had relationship challenges with those countries. So Central Asia is, as always, a, a melting pot of problems with with countries that have different strategic objectives and goals. What they're also showing is the ability to spread the, their propaganda mm -hmm. as far as you know, Columbia University in New York mm -hmm. and in places in, in Europe. And, and as we see this expanding uh, immigration invasion, as I called it, into Europe and America from many places in the Middle East, you can see how the, the kind of terror that Iran wants to spread just right now, even mm -hmm. around Israel and through the Middle East is something they're willing to spread through other nations as well, including ours. Yes, yeah. Lieutenant Gobb, we're gonna talk more about what happened at Columbia in this show later on. But in the meantime, I wanna ask you about the rise of protests that you are seeing here in the United States. What effect is this having on us in, internally? There seems to be an increase in division, especially among our youth. Oh, absolutely. And Columbia University is, is, is really a great example because that's the, the injection point in the academic world of the United States for the, the Marxist ideologies and these kinds of behaviors when the Frankfurt School planted itself in Columbia first and then spread throughout our, co our collegiate system and all the way down, unfortunately, into even our elementary schools. So that, that division, unfortunately, has been growing for decades and, and, it's, and it's by design. But I think the majority of Americans, if you actually go out onto the street and talk to them, especially in, you know, in middle America, outside of the cities, has realized that this is divisive and dangerous. And they know, you know, frankly, that they need to stand on the side of nations like Israel, who are true democracies and, and, and against all this crime and terror. You know, Lieutenant Gobb, it is, you know, disconcerting, as you said, to see how far reaching this is on so many levels. Where do you see this going? What's the end game here? Where where can we expect this to go? At this point, it's hard to tell. The ultimate question I think that happens next is what does Iran do in response to Israel, even though Iran started this whole thing in the first place? 
And Iran's military is not very capable. They're in, they're incapable truly of reaching Israel with any significant kind of force, land, sea, or air. Uh, I can see them potentially expanding this by activating Hezbollah on the north side of Israel as a way to, to respond for some sort of revenge strike. Uh, that remains to be seen as well. But uh, on a grander scale, how far this goes, uh, let's hope it doesn't go so far as to a greater regional conflict that could almost start something that looks like a World War III. Mm. Uh, but of course, I think we all prefer that this is able to be settled in a more peaceful manner eventually and very soon to the favor of Israel. And, and that's what we need to stand behind Israel for is whatever their strategic objectives are. That's what we need to do is stand with them. Well, a lot of people are praying for peace in the region. Lieutenant Colonel Darren Gobb, thank you for your time and perspective this morning. We appreciate it.